Hello, this is Bruce from GC Railfan, again bringing you more insanity from the lair of death, which is my bedroom. Uh, we shall turn Train Simulator up a bit more. So, um, today uh, we are reviewing the Dovetail games. Uh, sorry, let me just change it a bit. There we go, that's better. Um, we are reviewing the Dovetail games Class 121 Bubble Car DMU. And today um, we shall see just how crap it really is. Yes, I did just did say that at the beginning of a review. That bodes well not. So, anyway, let's uh, cut to the chase and begin. Uh, this is the Class 121 from Dovetail Games. Um, there's a lot of features on this which resemble an IHH model. Uh, I shall delve into that later. So, without further ado, let's have a look around the exterior. So, starting from the roof, we can see that they have modelled it quite accurately. Uh, there is a mottled paint flaking texture on the roof which looks alright but I don't like it personally, I think it looks like a bag of wank um, a shit stained pair of pants looks better um, we shall now look at the ends uh, it's going to be a very quick review, I'll just say this is the third time I've recorded this because of bandicam issues uh, just to correct the volume level so you guys can hear me and Railsim as well and it was really frustrating, I feel like crying um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, here we go, third time lucky so if we look at the uh, nose end here, uh, they've modelled it in typical 1980s stroke 90s format uh, with the black window surrounds, uh, the set number just below uh, the window and the high intensity headlight uh, as well. If we look down at the buffer beam, we've got all the multiple working gear there, the vat pipes and also the shackle coupling. The buffers are also good, uh, they're not quite round though, which is a criticism of mine. Uh, but the textures look alright, uh, they've been mirrored though somewhat, uh, so they look alright but could be done better, and we've got lamp irons on the side as well, uh, the buffers which is quite nice. If we go to the other end it is exactly the same, only difference being there are two straight exhaust pipes out of the top for the engines underneath. So we shall look at the side, uh, the door handles on this are 3D models so they do uh, stick out properly and a lot of proper texture. Uh, my graphics settings as usual are on low because I've got a bad graphics card uh, but it should look a bit better in format in a, in a working man's hard working 780 Ti bloody 2000 pound supercar MX5 fast super fart computer. Um, the livery looks quite authentic the only issue I have with it is it's very very blue uh, it's very bright blue. I think Network South East should have had a slightly darker shade of blue. Inside you can see that there are plenty of people sat inside and that the the maquette on the seats is authentic for the 80s and 90s. Uh, if we look at the bogies uh, underneath when I find the right button uh, there we go. The, their model quite nicely look quite accurate towards the prototype uh, as do all the engine details underneath. I'm a bit unsure about the underneath, I think it's been mirrored, I can't remember if there's two engines or one engine on a bubble car, uh, but if we go around the opposite side it looks like it's been flipped over uh, rather than mirrored, uh, so that's anything a bit dodgy about. The textures on all this gear is okay, uh, it could have been a lot lot better actually, a lot lot better. Um, I'm not too keen really on it. Um, to an extent I think uh, if a bit more time had been spent on the textures would be cool. Uh, also to note we've got root indicator boxes on the roof. I'll try and keep my hand steady this time so you don't have an epileptic fit while looking at the picture. And uh, the only criticism I have of this is it looks in proportion but in real life there is about a couple of inch gap between the red pinkish line you see and the start of the indicator box. Uh, with this being a 1990s uh, model variant you will notice that uh, it is blanked off. Uh, you cannot display numbers or letters on this head code box and uh, that's because by this time they had all been plated over and the gear inside would 
have been removed. So, uh, we shall get on to the inside and the cab controls. Well, actually before that, uh, this is essentially in real life a 117 power car with another cab stuck on the arse end of it. Uh, this is where I think things get a bit dodgy. Uh, the model has a lot of things that are very IHH, including that roof texture, the underwork uh, underneath the carriages, and the fact that some of the textures are a bit hit and miss. Um, it turns out that Paul Godber is at sorry Godber is still working for RSC. Um, I found out the gen from someone who works for another developer. Uh, they shall rename and on, remain anonymous, and the company they work for shall remain anonymous. But they did say to me they heard from one of their developer friends inside DTG that he was actually still working and producing models for them. So yet a bit of lackluster again. Um, but we shall see the physics uh, when we get moving uh, they definitely are a bit hit and miss and dodgy they're very IHH in fact they've almost been copied over if not they're exactly the same as the 117's physics so uh, we click on the model I shall just get rid of the F4 menu and if we go actually let me just show you the lights now I've clicked on it uh, we have headlights so we have uh, the high intensity and the proper white yellowy glow they do shine onto the track when TXX mode is on and then we've got um, the red lights which needs to be a little bit redder I think so shift H and H yeah lovely uh, we'll just press 5 and get a passenger view as you can see inside um, the texture is quite nice it's very clean uh, I think they've had a go at modelling the floor but it just seems a little bit bright in places the lights just look a bit lacklustre on the ceiling and you can only turn 180 degrees around which is rather annoying uh, the moquette is quite alright but again it looks like it's been photoed and then plastered on which looks a bit shit um, so we'll go into the cab control 1 H headlights uh, F4 right basically we've got all the dials in the cab usual controls for a first gen DMU uh, we've got the spoon, we've got the reversers, uh, we've got gear changes. Uh, uh, wait, hold on. Come on, out of gear. Oh, bollocks. Hold on. Shifty. Right, there we go. Perfect. Uh, we've got a throttle. Uh, we've got a throttle there which you can move. You've got the train brake. Uh, and stuff like that. Um, we've got an emergency brake there, we've got a handbrake uh, which goes on and off. I can't remember which way is on and which way is off. Uh, but anyway, we'll figure that out. Um, so yeah, we've got an AWS reset button as well. We've got a gas buzzer, which is quite nice. Uh, this is where I'll turn TS up a bit for you so you can all hear it. Let's just turn that up a bit more. So, anyway, that's all there. We've got the windscreen wipers as well, which work. Wee! Uh, from the interactive perspective, uh, you can't seem to pull down the blinds, pull down the driver's window, or anything like that. You only seem to be able to turn around partially in your cab view, which is rather annoying. Um, you could have been. Done, this could have been done with being set back a bit further uh, so you could see the whole of the control desk in front of you rather than a limited view um, so yeah we'll put it in forward, it's in forward let's pull it into gear and we shall show you a few more features uh, the sounds are completely from the class 101 the 111 and the 117 uh, so the sounds are very disappointing uh, I know Richard from Armstrong Powerhouse originally got these sounds done for RSE for the 101, but it's about time they were updated. So if anyone out there wants to do the sounds, please do them. So uh, we'll, we'll quickly take this out for a quick bash and uh, see what you think.
I'll just pull into the station and I'll let you observe something. Let's put the brakes on. Right, so on here, uh, you press T and all the doors open. Uh, the guards' doors don't open, but we said it would be nice if that was randomised, so not all doors open at the same time. Please take note RSE. So, you're back in the cab. When the doors close, you should get a guards' buzzer. Whenever that is. There we go, there's a buzzer. There we go, you yeah, press the buzzer down to uh, acknowledge it, so you've got the right way, like the real thing. And uh, you can throttle away. So let me just change the track so I just know where we're going. Lovely, there we go. Uh, the physics on this are a bit dodgy, so we'll try and take it all the way up to top speed, so you can see just how bad it really is. As you can hear with the gear change, um, what you'll find is the gear changes don't. Oh, pardon me. The gear changes don't sound proper. Uh, they sound very. Um, it sounds like they've not been adhered to sound properly when you change gears. Because when you change chain the buds or a car, you go. Mm -hmm. But this don't do that. It also seems very very rattly. As well. So, uh, gear 2 seems to have got us to 20 miles an hour somehow, I don't know how. Oh wait, I know why. <laughs> I just realised gear 2 takes you to 25 and I've got them. Ignore me and my ignorance. It's quite slow getting up to speed as well. Um, I know I'm on a 1 in 100, but even so, I think the physics do need a slight tweak. Personally, I, I think the, the physics are crap that have been copied over from the 117 and really do not reflect the true characteristics of the bull car. Oh, I know why. Handbrake. Just gotta watch the handbrake because I think it is on by default. So again, as you can hear, the sounds are very repetitive for the gears and the engine. So uh, we'll get it into top gear. Yeah, we'll stop doing that. so you can see how um, bad the physics are. Which I might be proved wrong actually. I'm just going to check the road ahead of me.
so this should be good for about 70 miles an hour, 75. As you can see, we're struggling to top out, and uh, now we're struggling to get to 70, uh, which is, to be honest, uh, quite bad. These should be able to do 75 very easily. Oh shit! That was bad. I hate you, TS. I hate you so much. So yeah, it tops at about 69 miles an hour, which is very, very bad. And uh, that's going. Oh, no, I'm bad. Yeah, it tops at about 69 mile an hour, and I'll show you how good the brakes are. So the brakes are on 78%, if we look at the vacuum dial, it has dumped the uh, vac. It does stop quite well. Um, but lower speed it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really reflect the true physics of a ball car. I have ridden on one uh, on Prez, um, in Prez, and there we go, we stopped. So it was a good stopping distance. So we'll oh, pop it in gear one, um, but yeah, I'm a bit dubious as to the physics. Uh, the fact that it's also 11.99, um, this comes in one livery. Uh. Pardon me. Um, this comes in one livery, um, which is the Nessie toothpaste livery, um, which is great. But for 11.99, it's like paying for eight in a baked bean tin. Um, personally, I think it's a rip-off. Um, you only get two scenarios for the most outdated route on the whole of, of uh, Train Simulator. Um, which is the Great Western Main Line uh, for this, and they're both career scenarios, and they're shit. Uh, the career scenario, you know, I'd rather pick my ass whilst riding a pogo stick up my fanny and putting my dick in a mangle than fucking doing those scenarios. Um, the career system is is shit. I have a better job finding Sputnik with a blind man taking a shit than I do trying to complete that scenario. That's how crap they are. Um, but that's just me. Um, the fact is as well, the sounds aren't brilliant. Uh, they're okay, but they're very outdated now. It's only the 117. So if you're going to buy this, I wouldn't recommend it uh, unless it's one in the Steam sale or two. You buy it when there's a few more reskins about on the internet and when there's also some alternate sounds around. I think that would be the best way to stop anyone feeling disappointed. Um, I was very excited for this come out, and I do like it, but I feel so deflated with this product. It feels like it has been rushed yet again by RSC, despite all the teasing and fucking provo uh, provocation they did on Facebook. Um, I still think it is a very big disappointment. I have not felt this disappointed since um, the West Somerset came out. That was a long time ago now. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to buy it, uh, just you know, be willing to tolerate it until the improvements are made. If you're not willing to wait that long, I suggest you do not buy it for the moment. Um, and that's my verdict. Sorry it's short, sorry it's a bit quiet. Um, like I said, it's the third time recording this in a day. Uh, I have had problems recording today. Um, and also my parents have gone bed, so if I shout now, uh, they will also kill me. Um, the thing is as well, I am losing the will to live at filming this, so sorry if it seems very lacklustre today, uh, but I need to get it done or else I'll just give up on life, probably top myself and shove a carrot on my bum. Um, so yes, um, we've got a few things, that, well that's basically the review actually of the 121. 
So yeah, that's my verdict. It's nice, but it could be a lot better. Must try hard at RSC. I've lost faith in you now. I think all your stuff is shit. Um, we are waiting on uh, RSC to um, release the castle. I really want to review that, and I really hope they have put a bit more thought into doing the castle, and it turns out nicely, uh, considering the amount of time we've been waiting for it. Uh, the Class 56 is on the cards for review. That will happen uh, just when. And uh, we've also got the JT Clan, which has been released this very day. So, um, yeah, that's all for me. There's plenty more coming soon. Uh, sorry this hasn't been terribly exciting for a review, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you all the best so please subscribe, please spread the word and uh, carry on clagging so from me, GT Ralphan it is farewell uh, and we shall just manage to see the we shall just see the uh, engine depart